Welcome to USA Global TV and Radio, where our mission is to provide education, entertainment, hope, and inspiration. USA Global TV and Radio connects you with experts and audiences all around the world every single day to help you succeed in business and to live a richer life. Visit us at usaglobaltv.com to learn about career and life-changing training and mentoring programs like The Listening Mentor. Subscribe to our newsletter to stay informed about our special programs and offers. Discover how you can become a guest on one of our shows or a host or producer of a USA Global TV and radio show of your very own. That's USA Global TV and radio, where the doctor is always in. Wisdom and Insights, your home for spiritually guided transformation and empowerment. I am your host, dear James, and together with the Unseen, Spirit, Source, and Symphony, we look at the current energies to the wisdom from the Unseen, and we go as guided. And this is part four. It is the bookend, the culmination, if you will, of the total solar eclipse energies that commenced on the 8th of April. Um, and the Mercury going retrograde on the 1st of April, there's so much energy. There is so much energy. <laughs> and yesterday was the Scorpio pink full moon. Tomorrow on the 25th, Mercury stations direct. I mean, you talk about an action-packed month of energies. And, you know, from the beginning, the Unseen said that 2024 would be, quote-unquote, a capstone moment. And April is certainly the pinnacle of that, of these energies. And let me just bring it up. Welcome, Olivia. And let me just bring up the astrological energies, because it's really quite extraordinary. Um, as I just said, on April 1st, Welcome, Alicia. On April, on April 1st, Mercury stations retrograde at 27 degrees Aries. On the 8th was the total solar eclipse in Aries. On the 10th was the Mars-Saturn conjunction. It creates a new two-year cycle. Followed by, on the 20th, this once in 14 years, it's the new Jupiter-Uranus conjunction. And these, these energies, so this creates another new 13-14 year cycle. Then yesterday, we had the Scorpio pink full moon, and tomorrow we have Mercury stationing direct. All of this occurring. Boom, 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 boom. Welcome, Lorna. And so you can see now, and remember, as a great uh, astrologer, she said, welcome, Sue. It was, I, I watched this last night on YouTube, and she was saying, listen, the Jupiter Uranus conjunction, the the total solar eclipse. Us humans get impatient. You know, we want that immediate gratification, that twenty four seven news cycle, and so forth. And as she said, these are cycles that are arcing out, and they'll get triggered. And that reminds me. So here's Mercury. Mercury went forward across nineteen degrees Aries. It's in retrograde, so it backs up over that point. It reverses over that point of nineteen degrees. And 19 degrees is the point, and let me just bring this up really quickly. I'm going to show you the astrological chart. There we are. So you see that the sun, the moon, and Chiron were at 19 degrees Aries for that total solar eclipse on the 8th of April. And, so, and now Mercury will station direct, and it's going to at 15 degrees Aries, and it's going to go traverse, accelerate back over that point. The point of the point welcome Colleen, is that each of these aspects will get triggered, meaning it will trigger these points. And Mercury, the way we think, the way we communicate, 
the the literal mind of the human and Mercury, the messenger to the gods, is going to trigger this 19 degrees Aries point for the third time. And so, and I'm let me bring the chart back up. I just share my screen again with you because I want to make a point here. When you see all of these energies, they're all of the planets for the most part. You see Pluto directly south, and then you see all of this cluster of planets to the right. And then directly opposite the planets is the symbol for the lot of fortune. It's the circle with an X in it. And then just above it is the symbol for the south node. So these are the south node denoting what we're going to release, what we're letting go of in life. Welcome, Debbie. And the lot of fortune is exactly that. The lots, drawing lots, the fortunes, the fates, where we're, you know, the north node denotes where we're going. And the lot of fortune is, in essence, this degree of benevolence and goodness and fortune. What's your lot of fortune? And at 23, and we've talked about, you know, going from 12 to 13 and 22 to 23. This, when you look at this, looks like a pendulum. All the weight of the planets is sitting clustered together. Pisces, Aries, Taurus. And then the south node and the lot of fortune at the top holding the pendulum. Why does that matter? Why is that important? Well. It is this week's theme, and the theme is the pendulum swing. And note that there's a difference. It wasn't the pendulum swings. Yes, however, it's the pendulum swing. It is this absolute, this absolutism. It's a fait accompli. It's a, a statement. It's a statement. The pendulum swing. Boom. It moves. And so here is our main theme. The pendulum swing. Hark the herald angels sing. And we've had this, and I love this image. You see, there's the, you know, like a boy and a girl, a young young woman, young man. He's kneeling, assisting her. You see all of this gold. You see all of these magical kind of hearts and stars and butterflies. In the foreground, you see this indigo blue, so like a turquoise indigo lit up, all this radiating light. And at the very top is this planet. And this planet for me looks like the, the Jupiter Uranus, this combination kind of looks like a gold disco ball, <laughs> but there's something very auspicious about it. There's something very revelatory about it. And there's something very new, innocent, love, possibility. The pendulum swing. It is a, the, the unseen is saying to us, this is a done deal. We're not going back, we're going forward. And the interesting thing about this, the pendulum swing, hark the herald angels sing. And I was like, hang on a second, we've had a show with that exact title, meaning Hark the Herald Angels Sing. You can't make this up if you tried. I looked back, it's from the June 28th, 2023 Weekly Wisdom and Insights show. And the title of the show was Hark the Herald Angels Sing, After Completion, Before Completion. It's hexagram 63 and hexagram 64 in the I Ching. And, it's, and it talks about the cycles. You know, it's like after completion, there's still something to do. And before completion, there's still something to do. Within the beginning is the end. Within the end is the beginning. And you'll see how these five things that were from the June 28th, 2023 show are going to be in today's show. The first thing the unseen said was, I once was lost, but now I am found. Reconnecting to source. And there's a big message in today's show about our direct connection to source. And these energies from all of these April energies are reinforcing this narrative of returning, of going back, of connecting to source, a direct connection to source. And we'll get to it. The second thing they said back on the June 28th show was, be weary not, for salvation is at hand. And salvation meaning, a preservation or deliverance from harm or ruin, and that this had to do with God's grace. 
And so there's this deliverance. Three was masquerading as fools. One is saved, the other not. And again, we've been talking through this entire journey since we began in, on November 17th of 2021, I believe, about this return to the divine feminine, the return of the divine feminine, and this, where are you in your alignment? Because in essence, this masquerading as fools, one is saved, the other is not. This one, number four, foundational. I have had this up for the last four weeks from the beginning of the, of the April energies, this statement of peace be with you. It was number four, but I've had it from the beginning of April and they're like, nope, you're going to use it on the last one, the, the bookend. And here it is, peace be with you and also with you, with your spirit and what that means when it was utilized. Um, and with that, they said, adding a greater depth and beauty, a whole new world. And last but not least, of the June 28th show, it was number five, celebrate, rejoice, renew. And so this is all leading to this celebration, this renewal. So the pendulum swing. It's, and this has to do, I'm just bringing that image back up again. And this was shown to me a long time ago by the unseen. What they said was, they showed me Earth and New Earth. And it was like a force hit New Earth. And what was removed was the shadow element, like that, the, the shadow element that's not being dealt with. So the less than good, the, the dark, the evil, it gets, so it gets this force knocks Earth. And I'm going to show you, I'm going to bring this up because you'll just, so as I'm talking about this, see this. Let's see. Thank you, Lorna. Sorry. It's Mercury retrograde. Hopefully you can hear me now while this is playing. Yes, sounds sound is off. Now it's back on. Okay. A little technical thing there. Mercury, when videos come on and play, it mutes my mic. I apologize. We're now back live. And just let me know in the comments that you can hear me. So this is Newton's cradle. And it's it's a demonstration of Newton's cradle. And Newton's cradle is a device usually made of metal that demonstrates the principles of conservation of momentum, and conservation of energy and physics with swinging spheres. When one sphere at the end is lifted and released, it strikes the stationary spheres, compressing them and thereby transmitting a pressure wave through the stationary uh, spheres, which creates a force that pushes the last sphere upward. The interesting thing was that new earth is up and to the right. That is what the unseen has always shown me. And so there's an interesting aspect of this Newton's cradle that demonstrates this force that is being lifted. And then lastly, it's like a pendulum. So when we're looking at the, the astrological chart from the uh, April 8th solar eclipse, total solar eclipse, and a pendulum is a simple example of energy transfer converting potential energy to kinetic energy over and over until the small amount of energy lost to heat and air resistance causes the pendulum to come to a rest. I'm demonstrating this and showing this to you all because it's all connected. This movement of existing earth, old earth to new earth, and the force of spheres, this for, there's the music of the spheres, that is the sound, that is the vibration of the cosmos of the unseen of the whole of the whole so this force knocks 
Knox Earth, <laughs> the old gets removed, and the new remains. And thereby, when you see these from back in June of 28 of 20, um, 2023, and today, the pendulum swing, the unseen is making a very clear statement that this is a fait accompli. This is going to happen. Happens, going to happen. Um, and thereby, they're demonstrating to us with this, and it's all connected. These energies in April, this capstone year, they're all, it's all connected. And so in essence, quote unquote, it's just a matter of time. Time meaning celestial time, divine time, earth time, but when do they happen? So let's move on now. I'm going to show you the main energies. We're going to look at these and see that, if I can get, there we go. It's youthful folly all month long. We're trying again. This 24, and we're doubling down on 24. So last week, if you watch last week's show and you're this week's show, you see me in black last week, you see me in black this week. The purity of the void. That was a directive from the unseen. And so, and then 4, 24, 24. So double 24s. And it, there's a doubling down. It's the first thing the unseen said. This doubling down, quote, on the new. Your new quote, new life awaits, exclamation point. So there's this doubling down on the new, your new life awaits. The 42424 becomes either an 18 slash 9, or it can become a 36 slash 9. So 18 and 36, this doubling down. 24 is about return, go back. We go back to where we began an octave higher. It's an eight year all year long, so it's about uniting everything within and, and internally, externally. 18 is decay, remedy. We're repairing what's spoiled. So in that analogy of Newton's cradle and the whole new earth and the way it's being done, we're removing the decay to remedy. The unseen has been asking us all along to individually remove the decay, repair the decay so as to remedy, so as to be in alignment with new earth, new energies, the new. 36 is brightness hiding. It's to reignite, meaning our light has been hidden. Our internal brightness, our soul source connection, that brightness has been hiding. The divine feminine has been hiding. And this is about the reignition, the reigniting of that light, that flame, that energy. And then the nine is small restraint, surrender, that we surrender to it, that we align, we get in alignment with soul source connection. So this is, and it's a doubling down of it. So make no mistake, it's a doubling down. Let me bring up our, and let me just tell you, so our main themes, we started with a threshold moment, reinvention. The next week was stepping through the doorway, what was I made for? Last week was a healed heart, three of swords to the three of cups. And let me just bring these up because they're so important, the visual. We are going from this wounded heart. On the left is betrayal and wounds and heartache and hardship and everything to the three of cups, the more, the fates, this cornucopia, celebration, and the cups, emotions, hearts, and this purity. But it's a celebration and it's unity, it's collaboration, it's celebration. So we're going from that, and these are very much like going from the devil, enslavement, where we've been enslaved, to the lovers, the purity of the innocence, which is in the image. So these demonstrated in the lovers on the right, it's liberated, we're liberated, delivered, free. And it's a similar thing to the main, you see the same innocence of the, of the young woman and the young man and the man kneeling down at her it's almost like it's like cinderella asked where they he's slipping the the glass slipper on her foot in this image and the magic of it the innocence the awe the youthful folly the love and so it's to remember all of that as we're coming through all this because again we're looking at these energies that are playing out in this entire month. So let's move to, I'm going to pull up Pam Youngin's uh, North Point Journal and share my screen with you. 
again, it was the, yesterday was the pink full moon. Beautiful image. And this is on Pixabay. And here, oop, there we go. Pam Young, she says, the current lunar cycle reaches its crescendo on Tuesday as the moon shines its brightest in the night sky. Indigenous peoples in eastern North America called the full moon of April the pink moon due to it occurring when the herb moss pink, creeping phlox, was in full bloom. This particular full moon is of special importance because it is the climax of the lunar cycle that began with the total solar eclipse on April 8th. Issues and events that were initiated around the time of that mega new moon should see significant developments this week as new revelations come into our awareness. And so remember, too, these are all trigger points. Mercury's triggering point. The, each event is triggering a point. These, uh, the Mars-Saturn creating a new two-year cycle. The Jupiter-Uranus creating a 14-year uh, new cycle. Uh, and then how the planets will trigger these points again over and over and over. So, But this yesterday full moon was a culmination. We've got the Pluto effect, and remember, Pluto's hanging out there. It's the, it's, it's the visionary. It's, the, it's revolutionary. So the planet Pluto, known as the Great Transformer, is a strong influence in this week's full moon. And the Scorpio full moon opposes Taurus, the Taurus sun. They will each be at four degrees of their respective signs. Four degrees means five degrees in the Sabian symbols. At that time, Pluto will be sitting at two degrees Aquarius, forming a hard square aspect to both luminaries. It's going to be in confrontation, in, in conflict with it. Pluto, through currently uh, pardon me, Pluto, there's Mercury retrograde, though currently labeled a dwarf planet by astronomers, is a powerful force in astrology. It's a force to be reckoned with. As the psychotherapist planet, Pluto digs deep into our psyche to expose the shadow. It's about purging and purifying the shadow and the light. It's never about eradicating. It's about harmonizing, purifying, bringing into our awareness the subconscious fears and motivations that have been controlling us from behind the scenes. As we work with Pluto, we become more, we become more aware of emotions and memories that have been suppressed or repressed, but that have been affecting our behaviors and self-concept. Whether they have been residing just beneath the surface or buried more deeply in our unconscious, Pluto gives us the opportunity to transmute them. This is all about the transmutation, the purging, the purifying of the shadow, utilizing the shadow on behalf of the light. It's to purify the void and purify the light. Yin, yang, masculine, feminine. There's a fixed T-square. The emotional impact of the full moon is increased by Pluto's involvement, especially since the sun, the moon, and Pluto will form a configuration called a T-square. To visualize this formation, imagine a large letter T in the sky with the sun and the moon at opposite ends of the crossbar, so they're at the top of the T, and Pluto is at the base or the stem. A T-square indicates a great deal of tension and pressure that is ready to erupt. It's ready to be released. We're ready. We're ready to purge, to release, to... Uh, you know, to transcend. And this energy assists in that. Our primary challenges with this T-square are to be flexible in our expectations, to have courage in crisis, and to value inner strength over having outer control. See, it's about knowing where we're going because we know where we've been. We're willing to look back. And it's not outside of us. It's internal. It's within us. And so we're utilizing these energies. We're harnessing them for our benefit, for us. As such, we must be aware of where we are intolerant, resistant to change, stubbornly attached to the status quo, or trying to control or manipulate circumstances instead of embracing the soul lesson involved. It's all about go as guided, soul source connection. It's not about ego, mind, personality. It is about harnessing the ego mind personality on behalf of the soul. Pluto, as it sits at the all-important apex point at the base of the T-square, has a pivotal role in the issues we will be working with this in this week's full moon. Like a skilled psychotherapist, Pluto will reveal and highlight the shadow, and in so doing, motivate us to make changes in areas 
where we have been resistant thus far. With Pluto's help, the awareness brought by the lunation becomes the first step in a process of cleansing, purging, purifying, detoxifying, after which we can rise like the phoenix from the ashes of what once was. And this is the beautiful part. It's uh, Colleen is saying, hopefully and thankfully purging. Yes. And Sue is saying, yes, I'm doing everything I can um, to deal with the decay. Exactly. Because it's, we got to be willing. It is a choice. It is about being proactive in our choices so that we rise like the phoenix. New earth, up and to the right. The decay gets knocked out. And the more proactive we are about dealing with our internal goo, the tiger's goo, and you know the, the, the muck and the guck, the, the labels, the identities, the stories, the scripts, all this stuff, we have to be willing to look at ourselves. It is the most empowering you will ever be. It is the most empowering thing you will ever do. Look at your stuff. It's yours. Each one of us, we have it. And then, and recognize that others in our lives are playing the role we ask them to play on a soul level, and then be willing to address it, transmute it. That's what these, that's what this, this capstone moment, this 2024, this capstone moment, this apex moment of April, and because there's something greater, bigger, happier, more wonderful on offer. So the more levity, the more lightness, the more light, purity of the void and the light, the more lightness, the greater the wonder, the greater the gifts. Because we've freed ourselves, devil to lovers, we've freed ourselves from the goo, from the darkness. Colleen is saying, crazy enough, I find myself crying easily, not soul cleansing, but a start. Yes, because crying is a wonderful way. See, it's, it's purifying, it's purging, it's releasing, it's letting out the old emotions. It's letting out that which has held us back. It could be a belief. Am I not worthy? Am I not good enough? Am I afraid? Am I a victim? Yes, so that's where crying is a great thing. It releases emotions. It shifts. And the beauty with that is to go as guided, get out in nature, flowers. It's fall in the southern hemisphere. It's, it's spring in the northern. And there's such opportunity for nature to nourish us, to guide us, to renew us. Let's look at our mantras. Let me go to that really quickly and bring it up. And you're going to see that, again, this beautiful um, indigo blue. You're going to see a lot of this um, color. It's a big theme. So it's this kind of turquoise, indigo, vibrating, blue topaz, white diamond light. It is the light of the new. So as we're looking at our mantra this week is, I am open, prepared, and ready to welcome the truth. You will note that in these four-part series for these, that we started our mantra with, I am open, able, and willing to reveal my spiritual fulfillment. If you're willing to reveal it, and thereby the spiritual fulfillment, it already exists. The next week was, I am. Last week was, I am my new reality. In each second, we create our reality. So I am my new reality. And then we move to this week, which is I am open, prepared, and ready to welcome the truth. This is universal truth, global truth, personal truth. I am open, prepared, and ready to welcome the truth. Not a truth, the truth. So what has been hidden gets revealed. I am open, prepared, and ready to welcome the truth. I'm dealing with my shadow. I'm, utilizing, I'm harnessing the shadow for the light, for the purity of each. I am open, prepared, and ready to welcome the truth. In our world affairs, Colleen just mentioned something about 45 and so forth. I am open, prepared, and ready to welcome the truth. 
because the truth speaks for itself. It needs no explanation. It needs no defense. The facts are the facts. They speak for themselves. And it's a very interesting thing that all four mantras for the, for the month of April, this empowered month, begins with I am. This direct connection to source. It is a massive reminder I am, and thereby of our divine nature, of our, um, of our divinity. And let me just go to that because, and also hark the herald angels sing. A herald angel is an intermediary between God and mankind that relates important news to humanity about upcoming events. So we've had this when we look back historically and in the, in the, Christianity and Islam, you know, the Bible, the Quran, and other uh, um, in the Vedic um, histories and so forth and, and religions, there's all kinds of herald angels denoting something, being an emissary, an intermediary between higher power, source, and humans. And so, and that they're announcing something. Well, so now let's look at this direct connection because there are two examples. We have Hebrews 7.26, and it says, In the Old Testament, before Jesus came to earth, the Israelites had to go to the priests to intercede on their behalf. They brought animals to be sacrificed for their sins. Different types of offerings represented different types of sins. The high priest was the only one who could enter the Holy of Holies. He was the one who would intercede on behalf of the people. When Jesus died on the cross, he became the high priest. He is holy and blameless, unstained by sin. He was given the highest place of honor in heaven. Now we have the Holy Spirit who intercedes on our behalf. We do not have to go before a priest or anyone else. We can go directly to God the Father. I would say to the Mother, Father, God. We can go direct, and this is in no way to demean or diminish organized religion. And I want to be very clear about that. This is simply a, a fact, the truth. Now we have the Holy Spirit who intercedes on our behalf. We do not have to go before a priest or anyone else. We can go directly to God the Father. Jesus tore the veil between God and man and allowed us to have direct access to God. In a Christian stance, God, Allah, Buddha, the all that is, source, however it resonates with you, the point is that that action tore the veil, opened the veil via the Holy Spirit to give us a direct connection to God, to source. You can bring your joys, sorrows, and requests before him, her, daily. There's a message. Remember back on the 26th, a direct connection to source. This direct connection. They're making, the unseen is making a point here that we have a direct connection. Should organized religion be the vehicle, the means by which you are able to access that and receive that? Wonderful. It's not the only way. And in essence, per this, Hebrews 7.26, it's not the way. The way is direct. Master Jesus backs this up with, and I have been waiting to use, <laughs> the unseen gave me this, weeks ago and it's just now and it's it's known as the woes of the pharisees and it's from matthew 23 and they said then jesus said to the crowds and to his disciples the teachers of the law and the pharisees sit in moses's seat so you must obey them and do everything they tell you but do not do what they do for they do not practice what they preach they tie up heavy loads and put them on men's shoulders, but they themselves are not willing to lift a finger to move them. Everything they do is done for men to see. They make their 
phylacteries wide and the tassels on their garments long. They love the place of honor at banquets and the most important seats in the synagogues. They love to be greeted in the marketplaces and, have, and to have men call them rabbi. But you are not to be called rabbi, for you have only one master and you are all brothers. And you do not call anyone on earth father, for you have one father and he is in heaven. Nor are you to be called teacher, for you have one teacher, the Christ, the Christ, the light. The greatest among you will be servant. For whoever exalts themselves will be humbled, and whoever humbles themselves will be exalted. Woe to you, teachers of the law and Pharisees, you hypocrites! You shut the kingdom of heaven in men's faces. You yourselves do not enter, nor will you let those enter who are trying to. Woe to you, teachers of the law and Pharisees, you hypocrites! You travel over land and sea to win a single convert, and when he becomes one, you make him twice as much a son of hell as you are. Woe to you, blind guides! You say, if anyone swears by the temple, it means nothing. But if anyone swears by the gold of the temple, he is bound by his oath. You blind fools! Which is greater, the gold or the temple that makes the gold sacred? You also say, if anyone swears by the altar, it means nothing. But if anyone swears by the gift on it, he is bound by his oath. You blind men, which is greater, the gift or the altar that makes the gift sacred? Therefore, he who swears by the altar swears by it and everything by and everything and by everything on it. And he who swears by the temple swears by it and by the one who dwells in it. Remember, Yahweh dwelt in the Holy of Holies in the temple. And he who swears by heaven swears by God's throne and by the one who sits on it. Woe to you, teachers of the law and Pharisees, you hypocrites! You give a tenth of your spices, mint, dill, and cumin, but you have neglected the more important matters of the law, justice, mercy, and faithfulness. You should have practiced the latter without neglecting the former. You blind guides, you strain out a gnat but swallow a camel. Woe to you, teachers of the law and Pharisees, you hypocrites! You clean the outside of the cup and dish, but inside they are full of greed and self-indulgence. Blind Pharisees, first clean the inside of the cup and dish, and then the outside will also be clean. Woe to you, teachers of the law and Pharisees, you hypocrites! You are like whitewashed tombs, which look beautiful on the outside, but on the inside are full of dead men's bones and everything unclean. In the same way, on the outside, you appear to be, you appear to people as righteous, but on the inside, you are full of hypocrisy and wickedness. Woe to you, teachers of the law and Pharisees, you hypocrites! You build tombs for the prophets and decorate the graves of the righteous, and you say, Quote, if we had lived in the days of our forefathers, we would not have taken part with them in shedding the blood of the prophets. So you testify against yourselves that you are the descendants of those who murdered the prophets. Fill up, then, the measure of the sin of your forefathers. You snakes, you brood of vipers, you will escape being condemned to hell? Question mark. Therefore, I am sending you prophets and wise men and teachers, some of them you will kill and crucify. Others you will flog in your synagogues and pursue from town to town. And so, upon you will come all the righteous blood that has been shed on earth, from the blood of righteous Abel to the blood of Zechariah, son of Berechiah, whom you murdered between the temple and the altar. I tell you the truth, all this will come upon this generation. O Jerusalem, Jerusalem! You who kill the prophets and stone those sent to you, how often I have longed to gather your children together as a hen gathers her chicks under her wings, but you were not willing. Look, your house is left to you desolate. For I tell you, you will not see me again until you say, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. The reason this is all a part of this is because it's a part of the doubling down. It is part of the lineage the historical and the religious lineage 
that hark the herald angels sing, the pendulum swing. There is a reminder to clean the inside of our vessels so that the outside is automatically clean. It is not the inverse. It is not this hypocrisy. It is not show. It is not identities and labels and, and all of this alternate realities and falsehoods and lies. And it's not about that is what's going to be wiped away, wiped out. 2,000 plus years ago, Master Jesus stood on the earth and said to the Pharisees, those that ran the temple in Jerusalem, what hypocrites, because they barred from the people. Master Jesus told those that were gathered, go direct to the Father. Go direct to source. And again, when organized religion reinforces that truth and that narrative and lifts people up, it's incredible. And that's what it should do. And that's why here, Weekly Wisdom and Insights, spiritually guided transformation and empowerment. It is about all of us, each of us. It's not about a leader, a messiah, and, and all the and community and false illusions. It's about you. It's about your strength, your integrity, your truth, your purity, your connection to source, soul source connection. And how that moves you, inspires you, cleanses you, purifies you, raises you up. Powerful, powerful, powerful messages in our in, in this entire month. I'm going to move to hexagram 24 ever so quickly uh, because I want to also get in. Peace be with you. So hexagram 24, return, go back. Its hidden influence is the receptive, the divine feminine, to yield. It's about yielding to source, yielding to your soul source connection to your soul. Its underlining cause is 44, coming to meet. We've said before, coming to meet encounter. It's like coming to meet our maker, coming to meet the unseen and the encounter that comes. They said, and this is our first quote, progress is often marked by a slow return to original sincerity. We've had this quote before. However, in this moment, this month of April, these astounding energies, the point is the, the image that you see is of the Holy Spirit, this white dove the whole, representing the Holy Spirit, Look at the blue and indigo lights, and it's radiating. Progress is often marked by a slow return to original sincerity. Purity, soul, divinity. And yet, slow return to original sincerity, and yet there's a, um, a rapidness of the energies. Everything is speeding up and moving us forward. And this is a beautiful quote. It's a proverb. It says, sow a thought, reap an action. Sow an action, reap a habit. Sow a habit, reap a character. Sow a character, reap a destiny. And it literally, there's another quote that says, your character is your fate. So this message over and over and over again is, don't be a hypocrite. Clean the inside of your vessel so that the outside naturally shines because the interior of your being is going to naturally radiate. Sometimes we need to stop and go back. This can arise when we have taken an improper course or the wrong path and need to return to where we started. We're returning to the divine feminine. We've been in 2,000 plus years of patriarchal, Piscean era rule. And sometimes, is it an improper course or have we, have we deviated from the purity of the divine masculine? And thereby that deviation that abandonment of the purity of the divine masculine is an improper course or wrong path, and thereby we need to return to where we started. Well, where do we start? We start 
the divine feminine. We come through, we come through the mother. Other times we can get so far away from who we really are that return is necessary to reconnect with the core part of us that has remained unchanged over time. The part that's unchanging, that's our true north, that is eternally pure, is our soul. The hidden fluence of the receptive, the divine feminine, shows a need for an inner opening while the cause or past condition was one of focusing on encountering others, external. After a time of splitting apart, wham, Newton's cradle, splitting apart, a return to the self to develop authenticity is necessary. You are at a turning point in this situation and progress is often marked by a slow return to original sincerity. That's our first quote. It may seem like you are not moving forward, although progress is still occurring. This is because by returning, you reconnect with your true path. So it may look like world events. It may look like a you-know-what show. And it may look like we're draconian and we're going backwards to the 18, you know, Arizona, 1864. But that's not what's happening. It may seem like you are not moving forward, although progress is still occurring. This is because the returning reconnects you with your true path. Humanity is being reconnected with our true path. This can be a time to examine your intentions. A disconnect may be occurring where you seek a specific outcome, yet experience something different. Examine your commitment to the situation and whether or not it truly serves you. There is a need to align intention, a purity of intention, and commitment with the truth of what you are truly capable of, of achieving. So we have alignment, we have purity of intention, we have commitment, we have truth. None of those speak to hypocrisy, lies, shadowy stuff. Return can come after false starts with the sole purpose of showing you what is truly important to you. So in other words, we can have false starts because we may not be we may not be, uh, we're not being honest with ourselves. So look to see what's what so that we reflect on the purity of our intentions. We're looking at ourselves from the inside out. We're purifying and cleansing our vessel from the inside out. This is a time when you have a fresh start to proceed more carefully. Sometimes the message can be those who have gone may return. The master said, and this is our second quote, When the way turns back, all things turn back with it. Turning back is how the way moves. Know when to stop and you will meet with no danger. So when the way turns back, all things turn back with it. It's, it's like an all-encompassing, um, it's, the, it's the yellow brick road, it's the, um, it's this magical essence of how the unseen spirit source symphony the universe how when they they're in control they the master weaver we're the guests they're the hosts we're the guests when that energy that force turns back everything turns with it and the turning back isn't go back in time turns back as in to correct it's 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 a it's secular. It's it's an, a a spiral, an ascension spiral. So it turns back. We come back to where we began an octave higher. Um, thunder within the earth, the image of a turning point. And if if anything, this month of April and these energies, everything that's happening celestially, as above, so below, is a turning point. The arousing thunder stirs the receptive earth and represents a turning point or a time for return. There may be a homecoming or a return to a past situation. Sometimes foo, this, home, this uh, got to get it in here. It's Mercury retrograde. This return <laughs> is about simply returning to the core of who we are, who you are, and thereby. We have these beautiful energies with this return and this return to the feminine, the receptive. It is the hidden influence in hexagram 24. So let us move to um, this doubling down, this doubling down on the new. 
because again, the unseen, the next thing I heard from the unseen was the, it's the lyrics from an ABBA song and it was honey, honey. And I believe if my memory serves right, we've had this song before, but honey, honey. So double honey, honey and land of milk and honey, honey, the gold, all this gold. And they're showing us in our main theme. They're showing us the image here, the pendulum swing. Look at all this gold. It's a gold blue um, sphere, planet, which is, for me, again, comes to Jupiter and Uranus conjunct. But you see the gold. And so this honey, honey. The song Honey, Honey by ABBA, an A-B-B-A, double A's, double B's, was the second song on the second album. The album's name is Waterloo. The song was released in English and Swedish. So all these doubles. Now, Waterloo, because the Unseen brought me to that. And they said the name Waterloo itself has entered the English vocabulary. A person who has been defeated after a run of success is said to have, quote, met their Waterloo. This was in regards to Napoleon Bonaparte. However, they're saying a person who has been defeated after a run of success. See, again, we go out, people go out and do illicit things, and it appears as though they're winning. It appears as though everything is on their side. And yet, they're defeated after a run of six. And it's said to have met their Waterloo. The pop group ABBA's winning entry in the 1974 Eurovision Song Contest was based on this phrase. The song is about a girl who has to surrender to the demands of her conqueror, just like Napoleon at the Battle of Waterloo. So again, the unseen, honey, honey, this ending, the pendulum swing, the, the girl who had to surrender to the demands of her conqueror, and yet, whoop, the pendulum swing, it changes in an instant. It's over. They are defeated after a run of success. Number three, The Unseen. Again, lyrics to a song. I heard, baby, we're not making love anymore. Or, baby, we're not making love like before. It's a Michael Bolton, Patti LaBelle song. And the point of this, it can be individual relationships, certainly. However, the greater arc, and it's number three. So it's the Trinity. It's Divine Masculine, Divine Feminine, Holy Spirit. Patriarchal, matriarchal. Divine Masculine, Divine Feminine. So this baby, we're not making love like before or anymore. It's to say the way it was is over. We're not making love like we did before. This divine masculine patriarchal rule, Piscean era, isn't working anymore. At a time, it was. But we've come so far out of alignment with the purity of the divine masculine and the Piscean era and the patriarchy, that we're not making love anymore. It's not simpatico. It's not symbiotic. It's not harmonic. It's not pure. And thereby, the pendulum swing, hark the herald angels sing, we're moving on. We are moving through. Honey, honey. We've got this doubling down on the new. Number four, and it had to do with, because again, this full moon of yesterday, the pink full moon, the Scorpio full moon, and the new moon total solar eclipse that occurred on the 8th are bookends. And number four, they said bookends sweep you off your feet. So these bookends are going to sweep us off our feet. Expect the unexpected in doubles. So remember that we've got a 14 year news cycle. We've got at least six months with the um, eclipse energies until the next set of eclipses occur. We've got a two-year cycle with uh, Mars and Saturn. What they're talking about, with the Unseen is talking about with the April energies is, and you see me, my two hands vibrating, 
bookends. They're going to sweep you off your feet. Expect the unexpected in doubles. So things will come. Somehow they will be related. It could be about abundance. It could be about change. It could be about transformation, renewal. And again, any aspect in our personal lives to the greater whole of, of humanity. But they're going to book each, bookend each other. And they're going to sweep us off our feet. And it expects, so Jupiter, Uranus, Uranus, expect the unexpected, Jupiter, the great benefit, the great, you know, abundance and prosperity and so forth. Expect the unexpected in doubles or bookends or boom, double, boom, however they may occur in your, in your lives and how we see them in our world as a whole. Um, and last but not least, with the unseen, number five, which denotes change. And we've had this before, and they're again bringing it back around, so doubles. Now you see me, now you don't. So this, this arcs back to masquerading as fools, one is saved, the other not. This whole thing of... Um, now you see me, now you don't. And they said personal, the unseen, others. So again, we can it can be something personal. Now you see me, now you don't. So somebody in our lives or some in that effect. Or from the unseen, because it spoke to the fact that to what degree we are open, we then engage and see the unseen. So now you see me, now you don't. Something appears, something dissipates. You see something in the clouds, it, 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 now you see me, now you don't. Any one of these aspects. Or in others, literally, others, now you see me, now you don't. Like, I'm in your life, now I'm not in your life. These types of things, because it denotes change. And whatever that change is, remember, it is happening for us, not to us. Um... Let me go back to, we got two last things. So I just want to go back to three um, Sabian symbols. The first two have to do with the Scorpio pink full moon uh, that was yesterday. The moon, the symbol for the moon, a massive rocky shore resists the pounding of the sea. The inertia of all institutionalized procedures. Slow is the rise of the land from the vast ocean. But once it is formed, it develops a formidable resistance to change despite storms. Likewise, once a culture has expressed its basic symbols and its particular way of thinking, feeling, and acting in concrete institutions, these change very slowly indeed. So we have this Piscean patriarchal era, these institutions, and how they become kind of resistant and formidable. And so um, once a culture has expressed its basic symbols and its particular way of thinking, feeling, and acting in concrete institutions, these change very slowly indeed. There's that slowly indeed. Uh-huh. Wink, wink. The individual who came to the greatest city soon finds their life set by the, ry the rhythms of city living, which obliterate vaster life processes and the moving tides of evolution. So in other words, we become ingrained labels, identities, scripts, um, the way the institutions, businesses, governments, all these things, they become ingrained. They become weighty and burdensome. We see in it how binding and resistant a communal way of life can become. In this, there is strength and stability. So in one hand, the positive aspect of this is there is strength and stability. And these are necessary factors in the social life of humankind until new horizons beckon. So this strength and stability and this, you know, this comfortableness and familiarity can be, in their most pure and positive aspect, viewed as strength and stability until new horizons beckon. And that is certainly what's happening. New horizons are beckoning.
the sun, the Sabian symbol for it, a widow at an open grave, the impermanence of all material and social bonds. All natural compounds decay, said the Buddha. The most beautiful and most enjoyed substance loses its potential energy through continuous actualization and the principle of integration and form is withdrawn, leaving the void. The open grave that ends all attachments. The void is the great challenge. What next? One must begin anew and if possible at a higher, we're going back to where we began an octave higher. The void is the great challenge. What next? One must begin anew and if possible at a higher, more inclusive and universal, less egocentric level. More inclusive and universal, divine feminine, matriarchal, Aquarian, less egocentric. It's not about the ego mind personality. It's about the soul source connection. This sequence, which deals with root elements and basic actions and responses, may seem negative, yet it opens the door to self-renewal, the threshold, the doorway. Beyond the personal attachment rises the possibility of participating in a larger sphere of existence, something beyond what we've known. This possibility rarely manifests itself except when one is ready to, quote, discard the past. So these two symbols for this full moon that's bookending the solar, the total solar eclipse energies. First, it's about until new horizons beckon, and then we have discard the past. They are doubling down on the same message. The old is over, the new is here. Last but not least is Mercury. Mercury stationing direct tomorrow. Its Sabian symbol for tomorrow is nature spirits are seen at work in the light of sunset, attunement to the potency of invisible forces of nature. In the light of personal fulfillment, humankind may be able to establish a life-giving contact with natural forces. They're talking about natural forces, the unseen. Nature, spirit, the unseen. These are active anytime growth processes take place but humankind's individual mind is usually too focused on working for consciously set goals to be able to realize concretely the presence of in invisible or occult wisdom forces in operation. If we're too in the trenches, too head down, too ego mind personality, if we're in those lanes, it's really one lane, we're not seeing what's occurring, what's really occurring. And what's really occurring is this advance. The forces constitute a specific realm of any planetary life. They are inherent on, in all biospheres. What this comes down to, when this Sabian symbol reaches into the consciousness of one seeking meaning, it should be seen as an invitation to open their mind to the possibility of approaching life in a holistic and non-rational intuitive manner. We need a, he a healthy ego mind personality. What we don't want is a corrupted vessel, a corrupted ego mind personality leading the show, running, running the day. So this is about a non-rational, holistic, intuitive manner. Soul, source, connection. Direct connection to source. That leads the day, leads the way, guides us. This symbol implies a call to repotentialization. What this means also is the, prop, is the process of, quote, becoming like a little child. And this is, again, the image of the pendulum swing. Hark the herald angels sing, and the innocence of this youthful young, young woman and young man, and the innocence and the purity and the goodness and the truth and the love, the celebration. So last but not least, we close out the show and these energies, and I know we're running slightly long, so please forgive me, but it is peace be with you. What does peace be with you mean? The word, and I may be pronouncing this wrong, erene means peace, peace of mind, invocation of peace, a common Jewish farewell in the Hebraist 
sense of the of health it means welfare of an individual so and it's in essence equal to the word shalom so it's a greeting used in um, Israel and in uh, Hebrew what is the context of this verse the chapter commonly organized in the Bible as John 20 recounts the resurrection of Jesus Christ after he died on the cross for the sins of the world and several of his appearances to his followers. The passage where the phrase is found three times is when he makes himself known to his disciples, including the 11 remaining who were most close to him. The Bible recounts he first said it as a greeting. He issued it as both as a greeting, but probably to assure uh, them as well, the apostles and the followers. During his first encounter, he entered a room despite the doors being locked. On the evening of that day, the first day of the week, the doors being locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. To show them he was himself and probably to calm them down, he showed them his nail pierced hands and side and the scars he still bore. The second time he said it, he began instituting the Great Commission and did an act which was the precursor to Pentecost. At Pentecost, the Holy Spirit, it's baptism by fire. The Holy Spirit descends upon those attended and they are illumined. It's the symbol that we were talking about, like the third wing, the activation of the God strand in the DNA, but this higher illumination. When he, Jesus, had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples were glad when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them, uh, to them again, peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, and so I am sending you. And when he said this, he breathed on them and said to them, receive the Holy Spirit. So the tearing of the veil, the, the breath of the Holy Spirit being imparted on us, and the direct connection. When Jesus said, peace be with you a second time, he more than likely was including the Father's peace was going to be with them in a more permanent and sustainable way after he ascended. At this moment, he gives them the Holy Spirit and begins the process of instituting the church. This moment did not formally give in, um, every believer the Holy Spirit, just the disciples present in the room. However, it did empower the ones there to begin acting in his name. The Holy Spirit is also called the Comforter, in many translations of the Bible into English, because it is God's permanent presence in the believer bringing peace. So this peace be with you is an acknowledgement, is, is a forceful statement from the unseen, saying to each of us, my presence, my gifts, my blessings, my peace, is everlasting and it is with you. So peace be with you. May it always be with you. And there's that beautiful piece of, you know, peace be peace be with you and unto you. You it's it's a, an acknowledgement. So it's a greeting, but it's also a bestowance. That may this peace, this universal peace, this God-given peace be with you. Big messages in the month of April. Big, 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 big. So I will leave you with all of that. Thank you all so much for all of your presence on this journey, for all of your comments in today's show. Lorna saying, I am so ready. Uh, ditto, 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 so am I. And um, next week, I'll just give you a preview, a little snippet. Next week, May 1st, 5-1, five, 5 changes, 1 creative force uh, to initiate um, and the show is about a direct calling or a direct call and then they said dot 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 from God from source Allah Buddha they all that is it's a direct call it's a direct calling and how that um, initiates inspires and it's interesting because Mars has been um, uh, absent, if you will, not visible from Earth for the past seven months. In May, Mars is quote-unquote reborn. Its visibility returns. Mars, creative force. And so the, the ability, the action and the ability to advance, move forward. So we have this beautiful, a direct calling 
from, from God, from source. That's next week's show. Until then, be well, be wise, and get to it. The pendulum swing. Hark the herald angels sing.